When USC loses at least the last five years, it's been an upset. If they lose Saturday in Eugene, at least to the betters, it's actually going to be what's expected. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview. Number nine, USC on the road at fifth-ranked Oregon. And for the first time since November of 2001, the Trojans will not be favored in a conference game. And for more, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston as we do every week. And Spencer, obviously the big reason why you saw USC lose to Stanford, the biggest upset as far as point spread goes in NCAA history. Then the team struggled at home against Oregon before beating Notre Dame. But the other side of that is that Oregon has just been bowling over people offensively. They had 450-plus rushing guards last week at Washington. But this USC defense, it, it, it's not Washington's defense. Well, it's not. You know, Cedric Ellis really leads that defensive unit, and they're strong. I mean, they've got a couple of uh, Buckus Award uh, semifinalists in that group uh, at linebacker. So I think at the end of the day, you're going to see this Oregon team really get stretched uh, like they haven't been so far this year and challenged defensively. But here's the upside. I think Oregon can meet the challenge. When you start looking at them and breaking them down over the course of the season, I look for benchmark things that they're doing that they hadn't done before. Uh, you go to Washington and beat them for the first time since 97. That's impressive to me because Tyree's team doesn't have a great a record, but they're battle-tested. They've got the number one in terms of ranking and challenge uh, schedule in the nation this year. And Oregon went there and then in the fourth quarter just distanced themselves big time. And speaking of distancing, it was Dixon who did it. So I think he's going to be a key in this game. Well, the, the thing I liked most about that victory was that they were up by 10 points. Washington came back and tied it twice, and then Oregon mm -hmm. pulled away. So they proved that they could take a punch and then move past it and then get on to the next game. Part of it is Jonathan Stewart. He's the uh, Pac-10 player yeah. of the week after his huge rushing game. But last year against USC, he was held to just 42 yards, carrying the ball 14 times. But this year, this Ducks attack, it just seems so much different than the offense we saw last year. And, and it starts with the man you mentioned, Dennis Dixon. What, what have you seen from him that, that you think it'll be that much better against USC? Well, for number one, and this is one characteristic or trait people aren't talking about, is his patience. I mean, if Stewart is willing to take over a game the way he did last week, uh, that's impressive. Uh, Dennis Dixon isn't impatient. He isn't forcing plays. I mean, this is the key to this game. He's not the quarterback that he was a year ago. He has totally elevated his game to another level. So not only does USC have to come in and deal with a, a quarterback, they've got to deal with the running back as well. So I think that that dual threat, uh, from a defensive standpoint, is going to give them challenges, talking about USC, and it's going to make it very difficult for them to totally cover every base and shut them down offensively. Well, they have USC also has offensive challenges as well, Spence, because uh, John yeah. David Booty, uh, he's been sitting out the last couple games with a broken middle finger on his throwing hand. Yeah. Mark Sanchez uh, last week led the team to the 38 nothing victory at, at Notre Dame. Booty may play, may not as of Wednesday morning. It's still up in the air. But, but the question here is, that, you know, Oregon's defense is not necessarily a good defense. They're 89th in the nation against the pass. But USC's yeah. wide receivers have been a little bit uh, disappointing as far as Vidal Hazleton, Patrick Turner, yeah. a little inconsistent. Does that change this weekend? Well, I, I don't think it changes, and here's why. Anytime you start fooling around with your quarterback situation, you have to first of all understand that USC has a rhythm-based time offense. And that means when you get a quarterback in there, yes, you may schematically have the same steps and so forth and so on, but the timing will be off. I see it every week in the National Football League. And if you see it with guys who are mature and, and obviously more better coached, you're going to see it that much more at the collegiate level. So I think that anytime you have a dual quarterback situation where you're relying on the pass to set your game up, I think you're going to have some issues. So timing will be a major problem for USC. It doesn't really matter at this point who's starting at quarterback. Well, that means that Chauncey Washington may have to play a huge part for USC and actually get some yards against this Oregon front seven, which is better against the run than this defense is against the pass. Spence, it's the first right. time in the 41-year history of Austin Stadium that two top ten teams will play against each other. Who do you like coming out of it? Well, I'm going with Oregon. I like them. I think they're a great Cinderella story, and I say that because uh, they are now at a place where they hadn't been before. If you look historically, Jason, they have faltered in this time of the year. They have a chance to put their stamp on this season. Mike Bellotti has got his team right where they want to be. They have the right to be confident and expect more at this point. Yeah, USC, on the other hand, is talking all the confidence in the world. They, they're saying they like being the underdog in this game. But I like mm. Oregon as well. It is a – Autzen Stadium is a very, very difficult place to play. So I will take Oregon as well. Spence, we will see you Saturday on the College Football Today, and we will see if we're both right on this one. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon.
Folks, USC has won three straight against Oregon, has a higher winning percentage against the Ducks than any other Pac-10 opponent, but I have a feeling this is a different season. See if that domination continues Saturday beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. For more on this game or any other, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.